Uh, hi guys and welcome to part two of making this um, slightly larger than miniature uh, hit and miss engine that I'm going to do. Um, a lot of the ideas are out of my head, some are from uh, some David Curzel drawings as I've said before. Um, the, this part's going to be mainly the uh, cylinder block, the block of aluminium that it's all made of, it's got the water chamber in it, uh, it holds the cylinder liner, the cast iron liner which is yet to be made, um, and the piston of course. So there's quite a little bit of detail in it and I want it to look nice when it's finished, uh, a short introduction and we'll get straight on with it. Okay guys, I hope you like it. Got to mark it across ways because that'd be centre of the cylinder. That's the centre of the bar, so it wants to be as much up so that any detailing I do will be equal all the way around. So we'll do it a score across there too. So we've now got, we've got that. Gonna machine that round there from that centre and take this metal away back to that back line that back line there. You see that? So that's got to be milled out all that and around that there. See technique what I'm using. Uh, it's leaving a, a beautiful finish on there. It looks like chrome, but uh, it is a good cutter. Um, I might as well turn camera off and come back when I've done this because I'm going to be at it for ages. I used one, two, three blocks on the side here. I squared this up so I knew my rotary table was square. Set it to zero. Put a one, two, three block square on to the block. Another one upright, measured from the bed of this.
right so <clears throat> we've done this detail uh, and it's turned out quite well it needs a bit of rubbing up actually I have likely gone over it but it needs a bit more because there's a, a little bit of a milling mark in there uh, and that radius needs cleaning up but I've, I've decided not to bother uh, I'm not to bother tarting this up right at this minute because there's lots of detail on it and when it's all finished it'll clean up so I've, I've blued up this area so basically uh, as you see it yeah like that this is the back where the uh, the conrod goes in and out there'll be a, a liner sticking out and then uh, in fact let me just slow down that eater because it's noisy and a bit quieter uh, yeah so uh, that details done but we need to do the same detail as that there and that'll be the, where the cylinder head goes I'm very close at where the cylinder head's going to go on there so that wants to be rounded but only for I've worked out three quarters of an inch I reckon um, the David Cazell drawings I think they're three quarters of an inch but that allowed for a boss sticking out at the front uh, I don't want a boss sticking out at the front my head's going to go clamp onto there although the uh, cast iron barrel will stick out a right little bit of a recess for seal um, but yeah I'm going to so I'm going to cut this round radius now um, put it back on the milling machine set it all up again uh, and when I get it going I'll probably do the same as what I've done which you won't have seen yet but when you do I've speeded that up I said I had my porridge uh, and speeded that up because it's uh, it's very uh, slow and laborious work on that uh, rotary table and you end up with your wrist killing you so I'll knock this off and I'll come back when we've got it all set up because um, I've take, I'm taking off a, a big chunk of, to start with simply because I can't get my rotary table any further back it's my um, DRO uh, shield is pressing hard against the um, dovetail so I had to cut that like that thereafter we're only going to cut small amounts should be a lot quieter having a wind back to the start you might wonder why I'm not cutting both ways but <clears throat> for those that you've got a milling machine you'll know climb milling is not that right clever and it tries to pull into the work and drag it round so I'm doing conventional milling which means I've got to come back to the start each time uh, and reset the cut and start and go right round again pain in the butt really but it's a smooth way Right, I'm not going to radius around there because cylinder head goes on there so I want that to be square. 
that and that. No, I'll dress it by hand. Whatever I need to do, which I don't know yet. Right, so we'll look at it. Oh, another fixture. Uh, to make that to sit under there to support it so we could uh, clamp it at both ends so that's another little fixture let's have a look nice finish around there so now we've got a cylinder as you would see it like that so, through the middle of that will be cylinder bar which will come out in the middle of that where that hole is okay so basically what we've done we've radiused the distance from there to there is the same as the distance from there to there and there to there so I've got perfectly a half round quite pleased with that there's still quite a lot to do on this though that it's got to be bored through it's going to be drilled underneath to accept the plate of however I'm going to mount it and then all the tops got to be drilled out for the water jacket as well so there's still lots to do but some more of part two done so I've chucked this up in here in the four jaw I'm going to bore the uh, main cylinder bore out for the cast iron liner. I did uh, I wrote that down somewhere what it needed to be. So I need to bore this to 32 millimeters, and then at the other end a right little bit of counter bar. But we'll get this done first. So 32 millimeters. I'm going to write that down. Otherwise, I will forget. Try not to run this too fast. Because it's so, so far off centre. Got to edit that sound out of there. A lot of sharpening this drill. That's what's wrong. down to size <clears throat> I'll be careful now not to scratch the ball it's coming swarf that's scratching it it's 
don't know, it'd be a handy. Best I'm gonna get. Thirty two point two two thirty two point two three that's fine. That is fine. So make a liner a little press in there. Yeah Is there what else I can do? Well it's uh not really. It needs to come out and return round. I'll probably bring you back when I've done that, but whether it'll be today or not I don't know. It's quite past eleven at night now. Clamp this with a through the bar. I put a piece of aluminium in there so I don't damage the bar. And two fixings. Uh, squared it to the bed, and I need to bar this water jacket now. Now I'm only going to drill the centre part through into the bar. The rest of it will be shallower. And I'm going to make sure I don't drill. I'm only going 38 millimeters deep from this top edge because I don't want to encroach on any possibility of head studs that are going to go in here. Likewise, at the side, I've allowed 12 millimeter because if there's fixings through the side, and I know there is, because I'll have my valve slide or uh, camshaft rod, push rod to somehow bush so I'm not going to go too deep uh, they say it's only aesthetics anyway it's just for looks and when I've finished all this later I'll probably make a lid for it to go on the top with some fancy little chimney type thing Can you see down there? 
So what I did with a board, a series of holes to 38 millimeters deep, and then crisscrossed and with as you've just seen me do to clean it out. I'll have to go right round perimeter when I finish, but now I've got to hog it this chunk out in the middle. So we've now taken all that out. It needs going right round perimeter at the end, although there will be a lid on it. Uh, but that in the centre is going to need to go now much deeper. So I need to take that to cutting tool out and put a, a longer one in uh, and plunge through. But I need to do more work holding. Probably turn it round the other way. Okay, Don't guys. Really so yet. I've chuck this up, put my chuck, uh, me vice back on and oh, chucked it up I've, I've put my vice back on and I've clamped this in here solid and I'm going to break through into the cylinder wall now uh, I've got to be careful I, I'm slightly off centre uh, that way because uh, where the radius is on the bottom uh, at the front I don't want to break into it obviously because that's the water jacket so I've gone slightly back, so I'm going to clear that. Uh, and I'm only going to a depth of 90mm out of the 100mm in its total length. Simply because I need to leave a little bit at the bottom for fixings. Um, I don't think I'll have a problem with fixings, but just in case. So I'm only cutting the channel, I'm cutting down the sides. So it'll be round the cylinder bar, the, the side will be cut away and underneath it, so you've got to get a, a bit of a thermo siphon going. They say it's not necessarily at all, it's just a sh for show really. So, okay, I'm going to break through in the middle first, because the swarf can fall down, it's a nightmare clearing the swarf out all the time. to come down forty mil, another ten millimeter. Forty two.
Okay, bang on. Clean that out. So can you see we've got a chamber there and we've got one on the other side I've just got to break the middle bit out and hopefully that'll create a channel across so there'll be a water can go down there down there uh, and as the water warms it'll rise and hopefully the cold water will fall that's the theory and you get the thermo siphon so I don't want to say don't go too deep so I'm going to leave some meat on the bottom for fixings etc okay I will uh, go through every penny I've spent on this because the whole idea for it to be made for nothing well that ain't worked out but we'll do some uh, sums at the end okay guys uh, I've showed that bit I'll knock off now I'll just finish plunging this in, I'll show it all as I've done it. Thank you. Right guys, this is just about complete. So, I'm going to see if you can see in there. We've got our, our channel. in there that's our slot so water can go right around the jacket okay I don't know whether I'm going to call it at that um, for this part too because <clears throat> what's left to do on this there's a cylinder head to make Obviously, once the cylinder head's made, it's got to be drilled with a pattern to suit. But I'm going to do that all in one. So maybe I'll bring that into part three or four or whatever it'll be. Uh, there'll be holes to drill in the bottom to mount it to whatever framework, subframe that I'm going to use. And there'll be a liner to make and fit. And there'll be a teapot lid to make. Again, I want to try and make something nice with maybe a little flared funnel on it instead of just in like a lot of them do. I've seen some in American shows where they uh, they fly out, you know, they look like a, I don't know, top of a steam train chimney sort of thing. Thought it might look nice. Okay, so I think that's it for part two. But we've done quite a lot when you think about it from a block of metal. We've come a long way. A lot of work done into it. It all needs feckling, but again, that can stay like that for now and I'll get on with another part and then okay uh, I did mention about buying stuff and I have had to uh, so far and it works out so far I've had to buy a piece of cast iron bar because I wasn't sure the piece I had was cast iron um, I've had to buy some silver solder just some little bits um, and so a piece of 10 milli alloy plate I've got a big thick piece for the base but I want to lift this up because the flywheels are quite big I don't want them to hang low I want it to the whole thing to be up up quite a bit that's my idea probably distance wise maybe somewhere there and then we can see brass conrod going backwards and forwards so I'd say the platform's going to be probably 10 inch altogether It'll be fairly, fairly big. Okay, guys, so thanks for watching so far. Uh, I'm pleased with results. We haven't had too many bloopers. Nothing really major has gone wrong. And uh, please click a like at the end. Uh, and if you're following this build, maybe show some comments or whatever if you think I'm doing it wrong or there's something I could have done better. Let me know. But I have done a lot of thinking on this. I love a lot of thinking. A lot of sweeping up as well. Cheers, guys.